It's, this is a, a, an exciting and fun adventure for me. And uh, the, talking and communicating with everybody in the Hedera community, bar none, I get this feeling of, uh, oh, that's amazing. And the synergy and the energy um, that's created is incredible. It's a treasure which I think we need to um, sort of preserve and evolve um, because it's, it's really fantastic. Now, um, it gives me a pleasure to present to you um, our technology um, to manage energy microgrids uh, running on uh, the Herdera platform. Now, um, this is a challenge we face. Um, as a society, we have developed an unquenchable thirst for electricity. Now, uh, the title of my uh, uh, slide here, um, is anyone a Super Tramp fan here? All oh, right, excellent. Um, crisis? What crisis? And I think that that kind of sums it up because I think that many people don't realize how vulnerable uh, we are. And um, just you know, to take some you know, statistics that I, I picked off the uh, internet. Um, so the average person in a you know, developed nation consumes 33 uh, kilowatt hours of electricity per day. Uh, so yeah, OK. What does that look like? So if you're working on your desktop computer for 132 hours, or watching your TV for 99 hours, or um, uh, boiling your kettle 330 times, you know, that's, that's the amount of uh, electricity you use on average. And this is against 16% um, of the world population, uh, which is 1.2 billion people who have no electricity whatsoever. They are trapped in poverty. So, vulnerability. Um, just looking at Hurricane Florence uh, last month, um, 890,000 homes without electricity. And I read in the paper a couple of days ago, Hurricane Michael, apparently there are still a quarter of a million households and businesses that still don't have electricity uh, a day or so ago. Um, Fukushima disaster. 4.4 uh, million homes without electricity over a long period of time. And just last year, 37.6 uh, million people in the US with, were affected. And this is not just these force majeures, but also um, the fact that the national grids are unable to manage uh, energy consumption properly across the country, or any country, in fact. So, why, what is the risk? It's that we have centralized power plants um, with unidirectional flow of electricity to end consumers. This is high risk, unstable, expensive, and polluting. Um, exposure to vulnerable infrastructure, the force majeure influences across the world are becoming more and more serious and frequent. Um, fluctuations uh, and Say you and me were watching like the World Series or um, the World Cup final, and the whistle goes for half time. We go into the kitchen, flick the kettle on for a cup of tea, throw up some uh, pizzas in the microwave, okay? That's cool for you and me. But imagine 100 million people doing the, the same thing. And that, to the, micro, uh, to the uh, national grid infrastructure, is difficult to deal with. Tenuous procurements. Now, the United Kingdom is buying almost half of its electricity from nuclear power stations in France on these EC contracts on the cusp of Brexit. Um, Germany is developing gas pipelines to Russia with, with Putin to fire up its, 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 uh, its plants to generate electricity. Prices are going up and up. Now, does any of this give me a warm, fuzzy feeling in the tummy? I don't think so. OK, um, so what do we need to do? Uh, electricity must evolve to an omnidirectional generation, storage, and consumption network of interconnected microgrids. This approach is cheap, robust, and safe. 
and we can offer energy stability through these virtual power plants uh, communicating with the national grids, risk mitigation um, from all of these sort of force majeure events that are occurring more frequently, uh, individual and community empowerment for the management of their own energy, massive cost reductions through economies of scale, I mean, if you look at like the price of photovoltaic shells versus um, you know, the price of kilowatt hours, it, it, it shows you. Um, new investment grade opportunities. Microfinancing can become a sector unto itself running on our platform of uh, financial and electrical value. And then we can help nations achieve their sustainable development goals according to the Paris Accord, COP21, et cetera, and set the pathway uh, to inclusion for communities who are deprived of electricity and trapped in poverty through microfinancing and technology. And then in encourage the democratization of energy. So, there are prerequisites uh, to, uh, to uh, running an efficient uh, 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 microgrid. High performance. I mean, you can imagine you know, the tokenization and consumption of kilowatt hours of electricity, massive amounts of, uh, of data. Accurate, customizable reporting to all the different types of stakeholders. And of course, security, governance, and stability. Um, all done in an environment of low energy transactions. Okay, uh, which is exactly the opposite of what Bitcoin and Ethereum do, but I don't want to go into that. But Hedera ticks all the boxes, okay? Um, so we have information processing at three levels. We have transactions, we have payments, and reporting. So um, transactions, that's all the tokenization of electricity that's produced and then consumed, and the smart contracts in between to, to manage all this. The payments are the, um, the financial settlements between all of the various stakeholders, and reporting must be customized to each stakeholder, and there are many. Oops. To achieve this, we've created two distinct um, database architectures. Um, one is a 100% decentralized database where each node manages its own information and uh, following consensus is, is synchronized across the whole network. And the other one is a centralized database where um, the nodes interact with the database uh, following consensus consensus uh, among the participants uh, according to a set of predetermined rules, and these rules can be edited and evolved. So this brings it all together. Um, so it, in green, we have uh, uh, all of the transactions. In, in gold, we have um, the financial settlements among the counterparties. And um, below, we have the reporting in silver, which is, of course, I say, in, in structured data format so that each of the stakeholders can receive the information they're looking for in, in, in the format they need. This is a high-level uh, architectural view of a um, project that were currently uh, underway in uh, the United Kingdom, Corby Glendale Eco Homes. We have shovels in the ground and software development underway. Um, and uh, here we can see how the microgrid is able to uh, integrate directly into um, the various metering and control vendors on the project at the IoT level. Um, through our open integration bus, which is actually just a fancy word for all the uh, APIs and programming language uh, wrappers. And the uh, users control their ecosystems and the peer-to-peer -peer energy trading through management dashboards. Uh, this is a, a diagram that shows our power operating system, a power OS, running on our virtual power plants, which is just buffer for electricity. We're working with NEC, with their Aeris, Aeris control system, um, to develop this. And the importance here is the relationship with the national grid um, and our uh, uh, virtual power plants. So we want to eliminate that, you know, uh, World Cup halftime with a Super Bowl issue. Okay. 
Um, and this just goes, uh, shows you how our assets and utilities come together in these uh, interconnected microgrids through our open integration bus. Huh? Oh, so this is a video. Unfortunately, I'm not able to show you um, the real thing, which is been really nice. But this gives you how we've used the decentralized uh, structured database to manage this technology. So we built um, uh, six nodes. This is on the SDK, uh, Swirls SDK, um, GMs or grid members uh, in a mesh network, and each. Um, uh, uh, grid member or, or node has its own database, its own structured database, uh, accessible by SQL because we want to keep it user-friendly to begin with. Uh, we're using these AWS T2 medium processors. And each of the users um, has a hash ID, which is uh, 250, a, a, SHA-256 compatible. And um, there's role-based login to the nodes, either as an administrator or the user. So um, here, across the top are the tabs in my, each one is a, um, a URL for the node in Amazon AWS uh, Cloud. Uh, we have GM1, grid member one, all the way to six. So I'm gonna log in to each one of these guys. And um, I want to show you um, how each of the nodes has sort of like an individual identity. Uh, and how they interact with the microgrid. So I go into this personal data screen, and you'll see this one belongs to John Smith uh, and has a unique ID. And so I just go through all of these guys uh, just to illustrate uh, what we've done. As I say, this is on the Swirls SDK, and the um, uh, Hedera SDK work is still a uh, work in progress, okay? And that's going to open up a huge um, scope of work for us. So then I'll go to GM1 and just give you a quick uh, overview of the screens we have. So we have an analysis and micro uh, data, which gives you like an analysis or analytics of, of the overall microgrid situation in terms of capacity and income that it generates. So this, as the microgrid evolves, that increases. This one gives you the configuration of each of the nodes, and this is important because as the microgrid, as I add micro, uh, solar panels and things, um, this, you know, the whole thing becomes more um, productive. So now I'm going to give you um, a, a demo of. Um, how the, um, sorry, this is the, the bottom screen is the, um, how each of the node members, each homeowner actually, is able to uh, input data of their configuration, income, and uh, production. So I'm gonna log out of um, this GM2 and log back in as an administrator. And you can see that the, um, user interfaces changes. So we have a dashboard which, in which you can view all of the nodes, whether they're active or not, and the transaction speeds that occur. They're all pretty much zero anyway. <laughs> uh, then we have an audit trail of the entire microgrid and the interactions of each node with the database, uh, with all of the parameters, uh, and whether it was a successful or, or a failed uh, transaction. Then we um, spool um, all of the information from gossip um, so the bottom line shows you um, all of the, you know, the parameters and the state of the consensus. And then we have something called ledger events, which gives you a view of all of the activities of the nodes uh, with Gossip Protocol. So this is not just the interactions with the database, but you know, in fact, the nodes are pinging each other and synchronizing pretty much on a one second basis. And the ledger events uh, keeps track of all of this. We can also uh, input um, queries directly into the database, um, and of course then consensus happens and the results come up. So what I like to do now is just uh, when the homeowner comes online and they want to become part of the microgrid, they're invited, they uh, put in all the information, their personal information, their name, date of birth, address, et cetera, et cetera. And then once that's done, they uh, press this save personal data button, 
and then a SHA-256 hash ID is generated, which is actually a cross-reference to the GM uh, as well, for, for ease, because it's a bit un user unfriendly, this big number. Um, and then subsequently, all interactions with the database, uh, or the microgrid happens through this ID, and the user information is kept confidential. So then if we look at microgrid configuration, this gives you um, all the information. So we, if we want to look at a microgrid uh, member and see the entire evolution of his microgrid, you know, how his configuration changed, how he's contributing to the microgrid, uh, we, can, we, can, we can see this um, through the, um, this uh, public key. And you know, solar panel orientation, inclination, and how much revenue it's generating for the microgrid. Now, if we look at the public key of the actual node owner, the homeowner, um, and say edit, it'll actually take you to this energy production screen. And so, if I've added new solar panels uh, to my house or something like that, I can input those changes. And of course, you know, the, the, the capacity increases, I'm contributing more to the microgrid. And maybe I upgrade my boiler to a thermal, a solar thermal system, and I say update. That immediately is updated across the entire microgrid, okay? Um, now, there's an important aspect that I have to say about the information we collect and manage. It's all in structured data. That means that Every change, everything must be according to uh, strict rules and standards according to a central taxonomy. Now, the bean counters love this because it means that uh, reporting can be done to multiple stakeholders um, using the same standard. There's no um, conflicts of information and uh, it's, it's easily success, uh, accessible. Um, and um, so I'll just show you um, what that looks like. I, I built this little utility into the system so that you can see this. And we'll just look at it in uh, a text format. Uh, and we open it in um, like you know, Word Pad. And it's not very seductive to the human eye, but I'm, uh, I'm, in, I'm told that uh, computers uh, see this as uh, cream and honey. So, Every piece of information is tagged and labeled so that drilling down and slicing and dicing through the information becomes very easy. Um, we use uh, taxonomies according to a globally accepted standard, XBRL, which is also the standard used by financial institutions, regulators, and tax authorities around the world. But it's not limited, it's infinite in scope, uh, and that's why uh, we use it. So you know, here's timestamp with, with its specific tag and label. And it's just, the sort of like unglamorous side of computing, I'm afraid, but it is an essential underlying thing to you know, give uh, governments uh, what they're looking for pretty much in reporting. So now I'd like to show you um, how the gossip protocol um, following consensus um, with interactions of the database um, synchronize across the entire microgrid. So GM4 is logged in as a user and as we've seen, GM5 is logged in as an administrator. And you can see that um, the last transaction of um, the microgrid was GM3 uh, creating an update, uh, which was successful. So if we go back to the user, um, and a lot of this information can be um, updated automatically eventually, but in our proof of concept. So annual heating bill is re reduced. Maybe the uh, household has had a baby, and they put an extra bedroom in. They say submit. And this information is, is, is reflected across the entire microgrid. And so if we look at GM5 again, uh, we can see that GM4 has uh, updated successfully. Uh, and all of the information, you can see uh, six bedrooms and stuff, uh, is there, uh, which is pretty impressive. I must say that this consensus using Hashcraft is very efficient uh, uh, and effective. Okay. Now, I'll just give you one more demo. Um, which is when a user, you know, updates uh, his home uh, and node. So um, he goes to his energy production screen, 
and you know, as I say, maybe he's gone out and bought, bought some new equipment which contributes to the overall economy of uh, the microgrid. And as I say, all of this can be updated automatically in full production. So we increase the, the size of the, uh, solar, you know, the surface area of the solar panels. Um, maybe we improve the inclination of the solar panels because that all contributes to the income. And um, you know, the heating output is increased. Uh, and then um, once that's updated, um, that's reflected across the entire microgrid. Uh, and then if we look at um, the administrator in tab five, it's a bit slow, um, we can see that GM1 has also uh, been successful in its update across the entire microgrid, okay? And the gossip protocol, you can see the last entry, this spools directly from gossip and all the parameters are correct and the stat status of the consensus is true. And then we look at ledger events and um, we can see that uh, that's there as well among all of the pinging uh, between the nodes. Now, I know that this is not very user-friendly, uh, just like a lot of this blockchain stuff. You look at these reports and these numbers and big long things, sort of like, what am I looking at? Um, but as we go on and the, uh, our, because of the fact that all the information is cross-reference UUIDs, uh, transaction IDs, timestamps, et cetera, it's very easy for us to customize the reports according to the exact needs of the user, which we can do. Now, just summarizing this information, so we have across all of the microgrid, we have the total surface area, uh, geothermal, and uh, solar panels, and this is against the overall income of the microgrid, okay? And um, this information is also reflected um, graphically. So we have uh, capacities and income versus the kilowatt hours uh, of you know, the various um, uh, methods. And we also keep a statistic of the sort of equipment that is used in the microgrid. So you know, this you know, helps for optimization and stuff. So I know this has been kind of a lightning uh, tour uh, and I've only touched upon some of these uh, functionalities, but you know, so please reach out to me if you have any uh, further questions, and it will be, give me a pleasure to communicate with you. So thank you very much. Thank you.